Hey, hope everybody's doing great. This is Dave Shepard with Code Beats. We're going to be getting started in just a few minutes. I'm going to start the beats in just a few minutes. Uh, glad you joined us today and hope you enjoy it. All right, and just so you know, we're going to be getting started here in just a minute. Welcome to Code Beats. And hey, this is Dave Shepard. Just letting you know, we'll be starting in just a few minutes. I'll start the beats in just a minute or two. Welcome to Code Beats. Right, and welcome to Code Beats. We're going to go ahead and get started here in just a minute. Until then, I hope you guys and gals enjoy the beats. Any digit in a place is ten times more than the digit to the right, the number that came before. Every two places a comma, every two places a comma. Again, so we're taking a ten. We multiply it by ten, and that gives us a hundred. And then we do it again. Then we're taking a hundred and multiply it by ten, and that gives us a thousand. And then we do it again. Then we're taking a thousand. We multiply it by ten. Then we get ten thousand, and we can still do it again. If you follow the pattern, this is a hundred thousand times ten. That's a million. We keep on counting every time that we move to the left one place more Then it's worth ten times more than it just was before See it starts with a small cube, ten of those make a long Ten longs make a flat, the pattern goes on and on Ten flats make a bigger cube, ten of those are bigger long Ten longs make a bigger flat, the pattern goes on and on It's the pattern It's the pattern Yeah It's the pattern yeah. The pattern 
Just a pattern. Pattern, 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 pattern. All right, and this is Dave Shepard. Welcome to Code Beats. We're going to be starting here in just a few minutes. Until then, I got a few videos I'm just going to be sharing with y'all. A little bit of uh, rap to get you in the mood. A uh, rap by some of the teachers, some of my favorite teacher raps out there on the internet. Here you go. We're starting in just a few minutes. Until then, hope you enjoy the beats. Now, to multiply really just means to make more. And you can say it twice, two times. See, that'll make four. Just like two times two really means two, two times. Or you could say count two twice. It just won't rhyme. First, you go and find some factors. You need at least two. You multiply them in the products, what you get when you're through. The first factor, that's the multiplicand. And once you have it, the multiplier tells you how many times to add it. Every time you add another, that's a multiple. It's what the number that you started with turns into. You take a number, multiply it by one. That's the lowest multiple of any number, and we've only begun. Cut up my timetables, multiplying so much fun. You want to add fast, I'll tell everyone that you should multiply. Yeah. You should multiply. I tell them you should multiply. You should multiply. Yeah. Now, okay, you know I'm packing my math in multiple rhymes of multiples, a whole number added multiple times. Look, it's so easy to see and it's so easy to count. You know your time tables well, then you can figure it out. Okay, a factor is a number that evenly fits inside of a product of some other factors that we multiply. And factors can be composite or prime. It depends on how many factors you can evenly deposit inside. If the only factors that fit are itself in one, your number's prime. And then, well, I guess the job is done. On the other hand, some factors aren't prime, you see. Composite numbers have a factor count of at least three. Just two factors and your numbers, P-R-I-M-E. You want to make more, it's easy to see. Then you should multiply. Yeah, you should multiply. I said it, you should multiply. Yeah. You want to make more, I'll tell everyone that you should multiply. And that's it. Hope y'all are having a great Thursday evening. Welcome to Code Beats. We're going to get started here in just one or two more minutes, but we're getting, making sure everybody has time to get on the stream. Until then, I'd like for you to go ahead and enjoy some of my favorite teacher raps that are out there. Get you in the mood for Code Beats. Here are some of the best teacher raps, uh, including two from down in Georgia, I believe. Uh, this is probably the best teacher raps on the planet. Here you go. Hope you enjoy. What's poppin'? Miss Evans, Mrs. Evans, and Mrs. Williams, take it away. What's poppin'? Miss Evans on the beat, so tapping. Tap you got options, but you better pass my class, no flopping. Gonna log in every day, every morning I'm watching. Yeah, we virtual and you know it's up, so we about to take it up a notch. Yeah, my role is the best, no comparing. We had to top our troop, no daring. CTA, E, fine arts and sports. Man, I want it all to myself, no sharing. COVID-19 had a stress, but it's nothing. We gon' overcome that stacks, no bluffing. Wear your mask, wash your hands, keep it safe. This is cause I really thought that a pandemic said something. On the south, we do more than rap. Doing all we can just to get you out the trap. Teaching up, lifting, motivating, and engaging our students. Going straight to the top, no cap. Yeah. What's poppin'? No flopping, no stopping, ha <laughs> we mopping, yeah. Net away, net away, net away, net away, net away. You know Miss Evans don't play, yeah. What's poppin'? Brand new year and I'm locked in. Far as this teaching go, I am unreachable. I'm number one in your top Let's 10. Miss Williams, been popping. 2020 new school, you're dropping. No COVID 19, ain't worried about a thing when the economy kind of ain't no stopping. Hey. I can teach a class with red, this drip hard. Go ahead, take a picture on your iPhone. 2020 school, yeah, yeah, virtual. And you know, Miss Williams go viral. Yeah. Talk to school, I'm a fool with the lesson. Come learn with me, I swear it's a blessing. Class is a session, and we just progressing. Success is the topic, it passes the message. Woo! My school is the best, there's no competition. We at the top, no switching positions. The road number one, tornado, let's get it. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, I say that green, that go, that green, that go, that green, that go, tornado, let's go. Hey, what's up? This is Dave Shepard, David C. Shepard of BCU. Welcome, day one of Coat Beats. This is my heritage, all I'm inheriting. Money and power, the maker, I'm emeritus. Tell me something, you motherfuckers can't tell me nothing. I'd rather die than to listen to you. All right, tonight we're going to be talking a little bit about how to use code in order to make hip hop beats. We're going to be learning how to write a melody with code, how to use numbers to make certain different pitches of code, and most importantly, we're going to be doing it all over top of great hip hop beats. I'm glad that y'all joined me today. Can't wait to teach you all about code beats using TunePad. Let's go ahead and get it. I just penetrate sex, money, murder. These are the breaks. These are the times. Level number nine. Look up in the sky. Tennis on the way. Tennis on the way. Tennis on the way. Motherfucker, I got winners on the way. You ain't without a buddy on your belt. You ain't without a ticket on your plate. You ain't sick enough to pull it on yourself. You ain't rich enough to hit the light of skate. Tell me when this stretch is gonna be my fate. Gonna be a fate. Gonna be a fate. Peace to the world. Let it rotate. Sex, money, murder. All right. Great. Glad y'all joined me. We're gonna to talk today about code beats. I'm David C. Shepard from VCU. And that's how we would normally start the show when we're actually broadcasting to the kids. But today, we're actually doing something a little different. You know, I'm not actually doing the real show, at least for the whole time. What I'm trying to do is just give y'all a taste of what we do with code beats, how we use hip hop to teach kids how to program. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is not actually part of the normal show, it's just to let you know what's going on. This is the VCU Alumni Association's third Thursday. Welcome, I uh, hope y'all are in the right place. I really appreciate y'all joining me. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna be learning how we use hip hop to teach kids how to program, okay? So that's, th that's what we're doing tonight. The rest of the program is gonna be just like it would be on a normal first night of Code Beats, okay? So y'all are gonna be my students for tonight. Uh, so just sit back, relax, join in, use Minty, and I'm gonna show you some technology to use. Y'all are gonna be making your first hip hop beat by the end of the class. So that's what we're up to tonight. Hope y'all are ready to make some beats. Let's get back to it. I also wanted to mention uh, one more thing before I go ahead and get started is, there is an article on this right on VCU News if you wanna check it out. Uh, I'll be putting this link in the chat uh, later on, but go ahead and check it out if you want a little more information about code beats. All right, so first of all, what the first thing I wanna get y'all uh, set up with is how we do code beats logistically, all right? As you may have noticed, we are watching on YouTube Live, okay? You are watching right now on YouTube Live. It looks something like this. You'll see my face in the corner, kind of like that. And we'll have uh, the screen up here like this, and you'll notice that there is a chat over here to my uh, left, to your right, okay? And that chat is really important, okay? Because that's how y'all give me feedback as my students. And so again, that chat right there to your right is where you can go ahead and put your thoughts. You can give your feedback to me. I'm always watching the chat, so I know what's going on. Please hit me up in the chat right now if you can hear me. Go ahead and type something in the chat. I see that some of y'all have already figured out how to do it. So again, let me know what's up in the chat. Say hello. Let me know you're alive. If you're out there, go ahead and start typing in that chat. It's right over here. Let me know what's up. I can wait for just a minute. Get your comments in the chat. Why are you here? Who you are? What's going on tonight? Hit me up in the chat. I want to hear from a couple of y'all. Make sure that you actually know how to chat. Um, so that you can give me feedback throughout this presentation. So get get your feedback right there in the chat. We need it from you. Come on, guys and gals. Give me some chats. I'll show you how it's done. I'm gonna also myself put something in the chat. Hi, everyone. 
Yeah. All right. Good. So we got some people asking some questions in the chat. That's great. And uh, there we go. There we go. We're getting some people that are figuring out. All right. So you all have passed the first test. That is how we're going to watch. And we're going to chat right there in YouTube live. Anybody else is out there, go ahead and figure out how to chat. It's right there. The other thing that we're going to do, and this is a little bit trickier, is we are going to vote. And we're going to do that using uh, Minty.com, all right? What I want you all to do is go to www.minty.com. I'm putting that in the chat right now. That is a website, and I want you to put in the code 9215146. What that will do is it'll allow you to vote in this presentation, okay? And for instance, once you get logged in, you can press these icons down here at the bottom. You can press a heart, a thumbs up button, or a cat button. Uh, and this will allow you to vote later on when we have different questions that I need to get your feedback from. So again, what I want you all to do is go ahead and get logged into minty.com. You can do it on your phone, or as I show right here, you can do it in another tab. You know, Keep that live stream right there. Uh, and and do uh, Minty Meter in another tab. And go ahead and let me know that you figured it out by pressing the icon right there in the bottom corner, uh, minty.com. It looks like at least one of y'all has figured it out. Two of y'all, excellent. Y'all are great students. I love it. We are figuring out this technology together. Now, this is, this is something we do on the first day as we kind of get make sure everybody is figuring out what they need to do to make this happen and make this a fun class for everybody. And interaction is really a big part of this class. Um, so, you know, we want to make sure that y'all can figure this out. Again, go to minty.com, M-E-N-T-I dot C-O-M, 9215146, and get those icons popping. Thank you very much. That's excellent. All right, all right. We're going to move on. And I'm going to ask you your first question, Aminti. Who do you guys and gals think is the greatest rapper of all time? Okay, you can use Minty.com to get your votes in now. Do you think it's Jay-Z? Are you a fan of Snoop Dogg? Smooth voice that is Snoop Dogg. Do you prefer Kendrick Lamar? Some great recent hits. Uh, do you like Missy Elliott all the way from P-Town? Are you more of a Sir Mix-a-Lot person uh, for his many different great songs? Do you love Cardi B? Or are you somebody that, you know, maybe doesn't know many rappers yet and you're just kind of interested in getting started? Looks like so far we, in, we are neck and neck. There is no agreement. Anybody else that's got an opinion, let me know. You just log into Minty. Put that code 921514. I would agree that Jay-Z is an excellent rapper. And so I'm glad to see that he is uh, actually in the lead. Snoop Dogg is also one of my personal favorites. Uh, but I guess I'm a little older. Kendrick Lamar is one of the the new brightest stars, I would say, in rap. Uh, I got some excellent songs, as y'all know. All right, so we got some votes in. It looks like Kendrick Lamar and, and Jay Z are tied. Thanks for letting me know what you think. And now you can tell me even more about what you think. Okay, I want to know why do you like hip hop? What makes hip hop unique and fun and cool to you? Do you like the beat? Do you like the bass? Do you like the lyrics? Like what makes hip hop interesting to you? Why would you ever want to come to a class with hip hop? This is a chance for y'all to just let me know, type in anything that you think about hip hop. I really want to get to know y'all. How and why do you like hip hop? You know, is it the bass? Do you have a big subwoofer in the back of your car? Um, yeah, just put out those phrases. Why in the world do you like hip hop? Some people like originality. Some people like the beat. Some people really like the bass. Like I said, they like to have subwoofers in the back of their car. Uh, they can really get to dancing and head bopping. A lot of them have stories. They're not quite country stories, so they're a little bit happier sometimes. But uh, they do. Some rap songs really do tell a story. Absolutely, um, and. They are very expressive, absolutely. A lot of people uh, use them as outlets. You know, when they write rap songs, they use them as outlets for their emotion and things like that. So we've got a lot of different reasons why people like rap songs in here. And it looks like some of the stories or the lyrics are some of the top reasons that y'all particularly like hip-hop. Excellent. Now... 
we're going to move on to a little bit of the teaching part of the class today. And one of the things we're going to be using is this program called TunePad. I just want to mention that because we're about to learn a little bit more about TunePad. But TunePad is the application where you write your code and then it takes that code and it makes music for you. And as you know, in this class, we use it to make hip hop beats. So without further ado, I want to pass it over to our coding expert. This is a little segment which I like to call Coding with Doug. Uh, Doug comes to us all the way from Brazil, He was where he was a professor of computer science for four years. He's going to give us the details on how to write code using TunePad. Pay attention to this part because you're going to be asked to play with TunePad right after this in the segment we like to call Coding with Doug. At Code Beats, we are using the TunePad. You can access TunePad using your web browser and the address tunepad.live. Or you can use the link that you are going to receive at each class. For example, I'm using the link for day one and press enter. The activity for day one will load in your web browser. The first thing that you have to do is use the button Remix in TunePad. Then you are going to use your user account that if you don't have, you can create your user account, use your username and your password and sign in, or you can continue as a guest. Now you can edit, you can modify your song and do your activity. Here we have multiple tracks for our song, and if you would like to check this song, you can use this play this button play here. You can pause and rewind your song. Here you have the instructions about what you have to do in this activity and multiple tracks for your song, for example, melody, bass kick, and other parts. If you would like to check each track individually, you can use this button play here. Usually, you have to use the first track, so you will receive some instructions about what to do. And here you can change your code. Once you are done, you have to use this button, Share Project. Click at Share Project and mark the option Share this project with other TunePad users. This will generate a link for your activity. So you can copy this link, access the submission form that is here, check which, which class is yours, click at Link, and access all right and we're going to go ahead and stop it right there because y'all don't actually need to turn in your assignments today i'm going to let you off the hook but that was just a little insight into how to use tunepad uh and thank you doug for giving us that insight into how to use it uh and so next up we're going to be doing a very simple class activity okay this class activity i'm putting this link right there in the chat and i want you to go ahead and open this activity yourself okay I'm going to open it too on the screen real quick just to show you how to use it. But here it is. I'm opening it right here. Code Beats example one. It is actually Cardi B's Be Careful. What you can do in this is I want you to explore. Uh, I want you to explore how to use this code, this TunePad interface. For instance, you can press play up here to hear the whole song. But let's say, hey, I only want to hear part of the song. I only want to hear one track. I could hear just this track. Let's play here. I only hear the piano, right? And you can even see the code that makes that track happen right there, although you don't have to understand that yet. And you can play other things, like here's another track, which I believe is the hi-hats. And you can hear just the hi-hats sound, right? So what I want y'all to do is, again, that link is right there in the chat. I want you to play around. I'm going to give y'all just five minutes starting now. Play around, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to do the next part of the class. You got five minutes. Open that right there. The link is in the chat. 
uh, ask any questions that you might have in the chat. Go make it happen. And we got about three and a half minutes left. For those of you that may be confused, what I want you to do now is click on that link. Code Beats Example 1. Open it in your own, on your own computer. And I want you to play around with playing the different tracks. We're going to come back in about three minutes now. And I'm going to continue on with the class. But this is the time in class when you get to try it out for yourself. Put any questions you might have in the chat. And I'll be happy to answer them. about two minutes left so make sure you've played different tracks you played the entire track all together you're going to be coming back in about two minutes All right, we got about one minute left, so start wrapping it up and head on back to the YouTube browser. We're going to get started right in about one minute. All right, and that's the end of our, <laughs> of our five minutes. I believe we've had a chance to go ahead and get 
you know, try out tune bad for just a minute. We're going to come on back and now we're going to learn a little bit about the musical part. Okay, so we definitely teach kids about the coding part of things, but we don't neglect the music part. Uh, if we just make good code, but we don't make good sound and music, it's not a lot of fun. So what we want to talk about a little bit today is we want to talk about how to make a melody. A melody, and this is really just lesson one, very simple um, lesson about what a melody is. A melody is simply a sequence of notes, and they move up or down. And they're often the main focus of the song, okay? So whenever you think of the words that a singer sings on top of a song, uh, the notes that those that that singer is singing comprises the melody all right and as i mentioned we don't just have a coding influence in this class but we have a strong musical influence and that is embodied by taylor barnett he is a trumpet player and professor at vcu he's a trumpet player in the no bs breath band for those of you that know that band it's a local band check it out if you don't and he's going to give us tips on writing a melody in what i like to call the music theory minute Hey there, this is Taylor Barnett from VCU Music, here with another Music Theory Minute. The topic for today is melody, and melody is just when you combine notes, or pitch, and rhythm. Melodies can be fast or slow, they can have a lot of notes or very few, so there's no real hard and fast rules for this, but my suggestion for you is you start with the rhythm and then you'll have a kind of concrete framework upon which to lay the notes, so to speak. So when we're dealing with rhythm, first thing we want to do is identify what the beat is, and then what the subdivision of the beat is. So let's check out the beat for Still Dre. One, two, three, four. So there's your beat. So each one of those would be coded as a one. So that means that the chords we're hearing Those would each be a 0.5. So our melody can have long notes. So they would be notes longer than one, maybe two, three, two and a half, whatever. Uh, and then you can have some fast notes if you want. You can go faster than 0.5 if you wanted something that sounded fast like one E and a two E and a. Those would each be a 0.25 if you wanted that. So I came up with a mel the melody and the rhythm for the melody I came up with is this one. Do, 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 do. So those first four things you hear are just a, a one. So one, 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 one. And then the next note is longer, so that would actually be a 1.5. And then it'd be a 0.5. So one, 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 1.5, 0. 0.5, one. So that's my, uh, that's my rhythm. And for as far as what notes work in this song. There are two chords, but they all come from the same scale. So your scale is this E minor scale. The first chord, it's like two chords in a row. So the first measure, the first four, bar, first four beats is an A minor chord. And the second one is an E minor chord. So A, C, E are good notes to emphasize, to uh, repeat or to hold for longer in that first measure and then E, G, and B are better for the second measure. Um, so if I were to put notes to fit these chords to my little uh, rhythm, I'd have E, A, C, B, G, E. And a lot of melodies do that. They'll, uh, they'll repeat over and over again and you can try changing up the notes the second time. So you can try repeating the same rhythm and uh, coming up with a different set of notes. Maybe I might go. The second time. So you can just mess around with that. So have fun, but first come up with a rhythm, something you can remember that's easy to sing and that's easy to code, and then use notes from the A minor chord in the first measure and the E minor chord in the second measure. And uh, you'll be off to the races. Have fun.
Thanks, Taylor. As you can tell, Taylor, Taylor is definitely a talented musician. So listen to some of those tips that he gave us on how to write the best melody. And we are going to go ahead and actually talk about how to do that with code now, okay? The way that we do it with code in CodePad, in TunePad, is we are going to use this command called PlayNote. And guess what PlayNote does? It plays a note. So we're just going to write a short sequence of commands. Play note one, play note two, play note three, and each play note command plays that particular note for one beat, okay? So there, it's a very simple, straightforward lesson that we're doing today. Uh, we're just gonna play simple quarter notes, if you're familiar with music quarter notes, um, over our, our uh, beat. And today we're actually gonna be using a beat called Humble, okay? And I'm gonna, I'm going to show you how to do this in just a second, but we're going to be using this link. Um, if you want to go ahead and get started, you can kind of cheat and start ahead of time. I'm going to show you, though, here what we're going to do. Here is the actual track you're going to be working on now, and this is Kendrick Lamar's Humble, and it sounds like this. Now, one thing you might notice if you actually know Kendrick Lamar's Humble is that there's a little uh, piano over top of the, the regular beat. All right, let's listen again. Do you hear a piano melody over top of the beat? And you might notice that piano melody is just a single note. And that's actually what we're going to be coding today, is we're going to be coding that simple melody here it is, right here. You can see it is just playing the same note over and over again. We can play it by itself. That's what it sounds like. And your job today is to look up at these notes that we have right here. We have all these notes specified for you. And I want you to change some of the notes that are played here. So right now we're playing the E flat 5, E flat 5, E flat 5, and E flat 5. Maybe you want to change one of those. Maybe we want this particular one to be a F flat five, right? And so when we play it, it'll sound a little different. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to look up at these available notes, change the values in here, and create a different melody, a melody of your own. Now, if you think creating a melody of only four notes is too simple, well, guess what? You can copy those and you can create four more. You can create a melody of four or eight or even 12 or 16 notes long, okay? So that's what we're up to today. You guys are gonna be remixing over top of the melody of Humble, and I'm gonna give you just about five minutes to get that done. The link is right there in the chat. Go ahead and get started. We're gonna be coming back in five minutes for the uh, concluding quiz. We're gonna see how much y'all learned today. So you have about five minutes, get in there, remix that humble beat and come back in about five minutes. I'll let you know when the time is up. Put those questions in the chat. We got about four minutes left. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat. We'll try to answer.
at about three minutes left. Remember, you can make melodies of length four, eight, 12, 16. Two minutes left. Make sure you're wrapping up those melodies. Coming back in about two minutes. Got one minute left. Start wrapping up and head back to your browser. Move on. Come. all right that's all the time make sure you're heading on back to your browser we're gonna go ahead and get started on another of my favorite parts of this class and that is quiz time everybody go ahead and get logged into minty.com minty.com get logged back into minty.com i'll put the link in the chat the numbers are nine two one five one four six minty.com and nine, two, one, five, one, four, and six. If you want to go ahead, we are going to do the quiz now. We're going to see what you guys and gals actually learned today. See if y'all learned anything and see who can answer the most questions the most quickly. Get on in to minty.com. I'll give you just another minute or two. Before we go ahead and start this quiz, we're going to see who is our champion today got three questions to see who's been paying the most attention we go ahead and open it up to questions after that so don't you worry if you got questions we will answer those at the end here and we're gonna go ahead and get started remember if you answer more quickly you get more points all right so here we go answer fast to get more points what command can be used to play a note in tune band? What command can be used to play a note in tune band? Is it? Do it now. Is it? Okay. Is it function? Is it play note? Or is it say? Take a guess if you don't know on minty.com. Take a guess. Do it now. Play. Function. Play note. Or say. What do you think? see how you did 
many of you got it wrong, but one of you at least got it right. Play note is exactly the command that you want to use to play notes. That's all right. Let's see who is ahead. It looks like Kara is our early leader. Next question, we got three questions. Remember, answer more quickly to get more points. Question number two, it's anybody's game at this point. What is a melody? How would you describe a melody? Is it the chords in the background of a song? Is it the drums in a song? Is it the beat of the song? Is it a sequence of single notes often the focus of the song? Or do you think it's the bass? What do you think a melody is? The chords, the drums, the beat, a single sequence of notes often the focus of the song, or the bass? And many of you got this right, a se sequence of single notes, often the focus of the song, much like when the singer is singing. That is the melody of the song. Let's see who's gonna pull ahead here. William must answer that very quickly. Way to go, William. Yeah, but Kara is still in the lead, but it's gonna be a tight finish here. Let's see. Question three of three, let's see who can get it. Remember, answer quickly to get more points. Question is, what can I use as a parameter for the command play note? What can I use as a parameter for the command play note? Can I use just empty parentheses? Can I use a variable? Can I use a number or a hash? Can I use a hash? Can I use a MIDI number? Can I use a parameter? What do you think you can use as a parameter? Parentheses, a variable, a hash, a MIDI number, or a parameter. All right, and one of you got it right. You can use a MIDI number, because that refers to a specific note that you can play, but you could also use a variable. And a variable might actually be defined like an A-flat or something that is something that you could use. All right, let's see the leaderboard. Who got this right? It looks like William might have got this right and got it right pretty fast. And so, William is our leader, our winner for today. Way to go, William. Good work, you were paying attention the whole webinar, which is saying something at five o'clock on a Thursday. Way to go. Excellent work to all of y'all, followed up by Kara, who also had some excellent answers. Now, that's gonna be how we would normally end the class. Right now we would say thanks for joining us for week one of Code Beats. Hope you've enjoyed it. We're gonna be exploring how to make beats around the semester. See ya. This is my heritage, all I'm inheriting, money and power, the mecca of America. Tell me something, you motherfuckers can't tell me nothing. However, we are not done for today. Today I'm also, of course, talking out to teachers and to people just interested in Code Beats. And so we have this great um, Minty page up. I want to ask you what kind of questions do you have right now? You can type in using Minty, and this will uh, allow me to answer your questions. If you don't have a question, you can also vote for other people's questions. I'm happy to tell you all about Code Beats. You know, we're doing Code Beats for Richmond Public Schools. We may, we will probably be doing it for Chesterfield County Schools in the near future, uh, and we're just really excited about bringing Code Beats to lots and lots of kids. It is the research that I'm doing with my, my PhD student, Douglas Krug, 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 but I'm very excited about also just sharing it with kids and getting kids excited about computer science and music. So again, if you have questions, you can put them right here in minty.com and we, you'll see them on the screen and I can go ahead and answer any questions that you might have. Hit me up. I'm happy to answer any questions y'all might have. So let me know if you got any. I'm gonna be hanging out for a few minutes because maybe it takes you a little while to type those into the uh, to Minty. But otherwise, if you've got if you've had enough code beats, that is the presentation for today. Uh, feel free to drop one off. But if you do have questions or if you want to hear other people's questions, feel free to stick around. I'm gonna be hanging out for just a few minutes uh, to make sure I can answer anybody's questions that they might have. If you got any questions about 
All right. Somebody's asking how many sessions are in the Code Beats camp. We have a variety of offerings in terms of like how we could deliver camps to people. Anywhere from like a one time kind of one day teaser camp to um, a one week full day summer camp to a kind of after school camp. So that is to say we have a variety of offerings from what we've we've tried a couple different things. I think the best um, kind of bang for your buck in terms of getting your students started and interested in coding and interested in beats is 10 session um camp that's kind of the best one so far that we've found about 10 sessions on the order of an hour each and uh you know yeah that's what we've found has been the best and the cool thing that we do at the end of those 10 sessions students are generally competent enough after that time to make their own beats from scratch and so we often have what what we call a beats competition kind of like a march madness style competition where we see you know, which student is able to create uh, the best beat and we play like, you know, this beat for this, this beat, and then we see who wins and we kind of have a March Madness style bracket, all in good fun. We make sure the kids know that it's all for fun and uh, the kids really enjoy that. Great question. Thanks for asking that question. Next question. I see all the other notes below. How can I record the changes that I make to the beat? Can I make a beat from scratch? Great questions. Um, you can absolutely, uh, let me answer them one at a time. So you should see all the notes defined in your humble, um, you know, track. And you can absolutely record the changes that you make to the beat. All you have to do is create a account in TunePad and then, um, whatever you do to the beat is saved to your account. You need to, of course, press the remix button because that copies a, a copy of the beat into your kind of private account. So all you really have to do to, to make your own beat or to, to save that beat into your account is make sure you create an account and then hit the remix button, which is on the left of the, of the track, and that will save it into your account. Another question that this person had, which is a great question, is can I make a beat from scratch? Absolutely. If you're already a musician or you already knew code or both, um, this is a fun thing to do. And what I recommend is you just make a track for the drums, for the hi-hat, for the melody, for the chords, and you just put the code for each separate thing in a separate track. But you can absolutely start from scratch and you can make your own beat entirely. In fact, that's how we end the class. We get kids to make their own beats and we play them in front of the entire class, sometimes as this March Madness style competition. So that's a great question. Thanks for sh sharing that question. Now, another thing I know some of y'all are probably from Chesterfield County, as I might have mentioned uh, in some emails that um, we will be available for Chesterfield County principals and student uh, and teachers to select from. Uh, there's a menu coming out on about December 1st that will be coming to the schools and you'll be able to see us there. Uh, we are one of the selected vendors for the after school enrichment program. So I'd encourage you if you're in Chesterfield County to uh, talk to your you know, principal or your STEM teachers uh, and, and make sure that they're aware that opportunity is coming and make sure they, they jump on it when it comes. We really are excited to, to teach some students in Chesterfield County. I actually grew up in Chesterfield County and I was first interested in computer science by a program that I did in uh, Chesterfield Public Schools. So we'd love to uh, teach some students in Chesterfield County. Now, if you have any further questions, don't hesitate to put them on Minty. Um, if you don't, that's fine too. Uh, feel free, you know, I'm just hanging out here to answer questions for a few more minutes, but otherwise that is the end of the show. That's all I got. I just wanted to give you all a quick overview of Code Beats. Uh, and kind of what we're about. So if you got any questions, hit me up. If you don't, feel free to go, uh, go ahead and get dinner. Uh, and don't hesitate to email me as well. I'm going to put that in the chat, actually, so you can reach out to me if you need me. My email is shepherdd at vcu.edu. Feel free to reach out with, to me if you have any follow-up questions that you don't want to do here. 
Justin, it's great to be in the area. Thank you very much, Justin. Pleasure to have you on board. Thank you, Kara, for setting this up. This is a lot of fun. Always fun to hang out with BCU alumni. <laughs> Welcome, Steve. Thanks for coming. Great to, to see you virtually. All right, and it looks like that's about all the questions that y'all have today. Thanks for hanging out with me. Hope you have a great Thursday. See you around. This has been Code Beats. This is my heritage. Y'all, I'm inheriting money and power. The mecca emeritus. Tell me something. You motherfuckers can't tell me nothing. I'd rather die than to listen to you. My DNA not for imitation. Your DNA an abomination. This how I this way you in the matrix. Dodge your bullets. Reaping what you're sowing. Stacking up the footage. Living on the go and sleeping in the villa. Sipping from a Grammy. Walking in the building. Diamond in the ceiling. Marble on the floor. Speech inside the window. Peeking out the window. Baby in the pool. God.